Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore Him. Good morning. So glad to have you all here with us this morning. Welcome. Welcome especially to those of you who are our guests here in the nave. Welcome to those of you who are part of our online community. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning. Today is the feast day of all saints. The Sunday of all saints. November 1st is all saints. Um, but it's kind of gotten swallowed up by Halloween. And we no longer really recognize November 1st as All Saints, that major feast day in the church's life. Recognizing that the word Halloween is All Hallows or All Saints Eve. And so, as far as the church is concerned, Halloween is the evening of All Saints. So we recognize that, but because of that loss, we've moved it to Sunday. Uh, and so we'll have baptisms today as a part of that. There are five occasions for baptism in the church, uh, officially. Um, they are all saints. The baptism of our Lord in January. The Easter vigil in the spring. Pentecost after Easter. And then whenever a bishop visits, we can do baptisms. Those are the days when we really recognize that they are being brought, these new souls brought into the church as a part of our community. And so on this feast day, the Sunday of All Saints, we are baptizing Liam, Brooks, Carter, Benjamin, and Jackson. Let us rejoice in these souls that become a part of this church today. And knowing that throughout the world, baptisms are occurring, celebrating the joy of faith. So again, welcome. May what we do this day bring you blessing, both those of you here and those of you who are part of the online community. Welcome. As we prepare for worship, please kneel as you are able for a moment of silent prayer. Please stand.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and we invite the children to come forward for Children's Chapel procession. reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. And it will be said on this day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is number 24, found in your bulletin. Please join us in singing the psalm as you are able.
from the book of Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, <clears throat> she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, <clears throat> my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping. He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead Four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. 
I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing there, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. What we know is that they were good friends to Jesus. And Jesus was a friend to them. We know that he ate at their house and stayed there. We know that Mary and Martha hosted him for meals, both before and after the resurrection, the um, resuscitation, the bringing back to life of Lazarus. They were good friends. They were involved in anointing his feet, preparing their meals, sitting at his feet, learning. He cared about them, and they cared about him. We're told that when Lazarus died, Jesus sees them. And we're told that, that he sees, he witnesses them weeping, crying in grief that they've lost their brother. Maybe thinking that Jesus messed up. If you had been here, and the verse that I learned as a little bitty kid, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Jesus wasn't weeping because Lazarus was dead. We're told that Jesus looks at Mary and Martha in their grief and their tears. He looks at those others who are also weeping at his death. And he's so moved that he himself is weeping. He is weeping over their grief and their pain and their suffering. He has compassion for them. Now, in the English, compassion means to suffer with. That if you have compassion for somebody, you have a way of so connecting to them that you suffer with them. In the Greek, it means to be so moved from the inward depths of who you are by someone's grief or someone's suffering. That what they are going through moves you from the most deepest parts of your heart and your soul. And in Hebrew, the word comes from the word womb. The compassion, the connection, the longing and the hope and the suffering that a parent would have for their children. 
And we're told that Jesus has compassion also for the crowds who are hungry, who are like a sheep without a shepherd. He suffers with them. He recognizes their pain, their suffering, their grief, their struggles. He joins them in this moment. And as Lazarus lays in the tomb with a stone in front of it, is that a foreshadowing of something? He is there with them. And he feels for them. He suffers with them. He longs to ease their pain. Or if not, at least to be able to walk with them in this. I remember a time when I was up in Dallas and I was driving through downtown Dallas. Don't do that if you don't have to. And I was at the stoplight, it was in the front. And a homeless man was walking across the street. And as he was walking across the street, when he got in front of my car, he looked and saw me. And when, and I went, oh Lord, I'm at a stoplight. It's going to turn green. What do I need to do? And this man got down on his knees and said, A blessing, Father, please. I felt that compassion. And I offered him a blessing. He got up, said thank you, and went on his way. All he wanted was for God to bless him and the church to see him. To recognize him as a human being. Made in the image of God. Today we celebrate Sunday of All Saints. Not just remembering those saints who have died, those who surround us in stained glass but the saints that we remember who taught us the faith in our own lives. The saints that continue to move us to think about what it means to be faithful Christians. And as Paul reminds the church over and over again, all of us who walk the faith, he calls saints, holy ones of God, Seeking to walk the ways of Christ. Living the virtues that Christ shows us. Those Christian virtues that we are called to embrace and live out every day in every way of our lives. This is a saint. And on this day we're reminded of the Christian virtue of compassion of being open and willing to suffer with those who are in grief or trials or tribulations or pain or suffering. That we offer them the blessing of Christ's presence in our life. That we offer them the blessing of the church. On this All Saints Sunday, we're called to remember what it means to say, I am Christian. Every day of our life, in every way of our day. We pray that I slowly grow and mature, developing more and more compassion for those in need, for those who need to be seen and recognized and cared for. To not prejudge. To not walk away or ignore. Jesus doesn't say to Mary and Martha or Lazarus. Lazarus knows he's going to die again. He isn't resurrected from the grave yet. He will live and then die. And Jesus doesn't promise us no suffering, no grief, no pain. 
What he promises us is that he will be with us. He will walk with us. That he will have compassion for us as we live the life that we have. Or as the Old Testament reminds us, God cares. It is God's compassion that we see in Jesus. It is God's compassion and love that we see in Jesus. And it is the compassion of Jesus that the world should see in us. On this All Saints Sunday, we can say, oh, all of those are saints, and none of us really need to worry about it. Or we can recognize that in our baptism and our walk with Christ, we are all called to sainthood. We are all called to the Christian virtues that Christ tries to teach us and instill in us so that we might be the disciples he so much wants. And on this day, we're going to be baptizing some souls into this body of Christ. We're going to make promises to raise them into the full stature of Christ, to teach them what it means to be a disciple, to teach them what it means to have compassion and love, to teach them how to forgive, to teach them how to make decisions based upon their faith in Jesus. And we teach them that by us being saints as best we can, remembering that whenever you fall into sin, there's a remedy. Repent and return to the Lord. That none of us are going to be perfect. None of us are going to do this all the time. But all of us should strive. And when we don't make it, we seek forgiveness and we move forward. We don't wallow in that. We seek the grace of God so that the next time we might be a little bit more Christ-like. On this day, these souls will be buried with Christ in His death and raised to new life in His resurrection. This is an Easter moment for them. And just as Jesus calls Lazarus out of the tomb wrapped up Jesus says unbind him and set him free and on this day these souls will be brought into a new life with Christ walking with him so that one day they will say there's never been a day I didn't know Jesus was with me there's never been a day when I didn't know who Jesus was That is our hope. That is our prayer. And that is our task. So on this day, we will renew our own baptismal vows as we prepare them for baptism. How good are you at keeping a promise? How good do you keep promises? Because those vows that we make this morning are promises to God and the church. May our intention be to live as close to those as we possibly can. Knowing that when we can't or we don't, there's a way out of that. And it's repent and return to the Lord. So let us welcome these new souls. Let's remember our own faith. And some of you were baptized on this Sunday at some point in your faith. And if you were baptized on All Saints Sunday, give thanks for this day and the beginning of your journey. And if it wasn't this day, remember which day it was. 
or adopt one. The compassion of Christ is the virtue of Christ that we seek to embrace this day. May it be so. Amen. Okay, it's time. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. If the parents, godparents, all will stand. And we'll go from oldest to youngest. And your responses are found on page 301 or in your bulletin. No, no. Present. I present. Do you desire to be baptized, Liam? You do? Yay! I present Brooks to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? So I ask you. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? If the congregation will now stand, and I ask you this question. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of bodies, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. 
Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children out of Israel into the, uh, out of their bondage to, in Egypt to the land of promise. In it, your Son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. We invite the children to come from Children's Chapel and come on up front if you want to witness the baptisms. If there are other children in the congregation who'd like to come up so that they can see the baptism, please feel free to come forward and have a seat on the floor or on the pew that's right here. Okay, Liam. Okay, bend forward. Look at me. <laughs> Liam, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Liam, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Okay, Brooks Walker Garza. Okay. Come on. Now, 
Look at me. There you go. Brooks Walker Garza, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good job. Good job. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Carter. So Benjamin. Yes. Hey, hey Benjamin, look at me. Hey. Benjamin, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There we go. Benjamin, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. So now, Carter. Now, Carter. Jackson. Jackson. I know. I know. Jackson, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, you like that. <laughs> Jackson, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked Christ's own forever. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I've lost track. Now we're Carter James. Okay. Carter. Carter. You want to help? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can play in it. Carter, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. Nice. Hi. Carter, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Um, if the baptism family, just the parent and baptized, will come forward for just a minute. Come on up, back up front. We're not doing it again. You're fine. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon these, your servants, the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. And now, following the bulletin, let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection. And share with us in his eternal priesthood. May I introduce to you the newest members of Christ's one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Baptismal candle is coming. Baptismal, ca ca baptismal candle is coming. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in the Lord's peace.
Okay, we have baptismal certificates for the family and for the godparents, and we have a gift, a baptismal gift to give out. Um, God's peace. God's peace. And y'all can be seated when you... Are we good? We're good. Good morning. Again, it's good to see you all this morning. Those of you here, those of you who are part of our online, what a wonderful All Saints Sunday it is. Know that by your baptism, you're welcome to receive communion with us. Um, you don't have to be a member of the Episcopal Church or Trinity, but by your baptism, please feel free to receive communion with us if you so wish. If you do, when you come up, kneel at the altar rail or stand, whichever you prefer. Put your hands out. We'll put the wafer in your palm. You may either eat it or hold on to it, and then when the chalice comes, just dip it in the wine and then receive it. If you don't want to receive communion, and, but you want to show unity with the families and the church, come forward, cross your arms like this. That tells us that you do not wish res to receive communion. We'll say a prayer over you. If you don't want to do either one of those and you want to stay where you are, just remind um, you all what I say most of the time. If you want to stay where you are, that is perfectly okay. Nobody's going to judge you or give you the stink eye if you decide to stay where you're seated. So do what is comfortable to you uh, this morning, but know you are welcome at this table. A few announcements I would like to make. One is uh, next, sun next Sunday, a second Sunday, so after the 10 o'clock we'll have lunch. For those of you who wish to stay, uh, when you come next Sunday, please bring your appetite, share some uh, good food with us and some fellowship, and get to know each other a little bit better. As most of you probably already know, I did uh, announce my retirement um, a week or so ago, and uh, that will take place the first half of December. Um, so I'm going to be having three at this point uh, rector's forums, where I will meet with those who want to talk about this a little bit more. The first one will be Friday the 8th, the Friday coming up, at 11 o'clock in the library. Um, so if you want to come at that time, uh, know that it may be, it could be 15 minutes, it could be 30 minutes, it depends on the conversation. But know that you're welcome to come if you want to discuss it. Also, on the 10th and 17th, those are Sundays, I will have a rector's forum after the 10 o'clock service, and so we invite you to consider that as well. But again, you don't have to. This is just for those who really want to have a conversation with me about what I'm doing um, and why this is happening or what's going to happen, all that sort of thing. Um, Emerus, our senior warden, will be communicating with you regularly about the process and the progress as we move forward. Um, Prime Time guys are hosting the annual Wall of Generosity. It's a food get in gathering uh, period during Advent, which the food will then be uh, collected and taken to Interfaith Food Pantry for those who are in need of food, especially as they move toward Christmas. So please, you pick up a box in the Narthex or in Butler Hall. It has a sheet of paper with the list of items that the food pantry says they really need. So we invite you to please consider that act of generosity as we move forward through Thanksgiving and into Christmas. Our in-gathering for uh, commitment cards, our financial uh, offering for the year of 2025 is November the 17th. Uh, two Sundays from now, we invite you to please prayerfully consider how you will support the ministries of the parish in 25. Uh, you should have received a commitment card in the mail. If you didn't, um, there's some in the narthex, in, um, and we can, you can just pick one up. If you didn't get one in the mail, then we need to find out if we have a wrong address, um, uh, if you've moved or something like that, or we just have some 
something where we don't have your address. So please let us know if there's an issue with that. Um, after this service, the Scouts are uh, using a, uh, today for a fall fundraiser that will help them in their annual fees uh, to, to stay in Scouts. Uh, it, they're coming uh, with a choice of barbecue chicken or Kalua pork on a bun, a sign item, I don't know which, and dessert. We hope that you go to Butler Hall, maybe pick up a few items. They're takeout, so you can just pick some up and take them home with you if you wish to do that. But this supports our scouts. And did you? there's close to 100 scouts involved in our various packs, troops, and um, crews. So please um, help support by um, getting some good food as well. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week for blessing? If you are online and you have a birthday or anniversary, I invite you to put that in the comments section of the feed so that the congregation that's online with you can wish you a happy anniversary or a happy birthday. Also, if you want to, you can stand and as a symbol that you too receive this blessing. Okay, well then hold on, because um, I'll have a different blessing for you. Birthday? Today's birthday. Happy birthday. Birthday anniversary. <laughs> you have a birthday? How old will you be on your birthday? Five. Five? That's a handful. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yes, you know. <laughs> An anniversary, which one? Eighth. Eighth? When? Tuesday. All right. Let us pray, O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray in your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, happy birthday, happy birthday anniversary. So, again, this is number two, second anniversary to her priesthood. Now, let me find it. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. On this anniversary of Mother Joanna's ordination, may she continue to exalt you, O Lord, in the midst of your people. Offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you. Boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation and rightly administer the sacraments of the new covenant. Continue to make her a faithful pastor a patient teacher, and a wise counselor. Grant that in all things she may serve without reproach, so that your people may be strengthened and your name glorified in all the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you this day and throughout your ministry. Amen. Happy anniversary. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Receive, O Lord, these gifts presented by your people for the work of your church. Amen. Amen. Great Thanksgiving is found on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal priesthood your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
there's a peace I've come to know. Though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul. I can say it is well. Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won he is risen from the dead and I will rise when he calls my no more sorrow, no more pain, I will rise on eagle's wings before my God, fall on my knees and a day that's drawing near when this darkness breaks to light and the shadows disappear and my faith shall be my eyes Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won. He is risen from the dead. And I will rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow, no
Cheryl and Charlie, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread, one cup. Let us join together in the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Almighty God, in union with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. As Jesus Christ has taught us, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. Since we cannot receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, we beseech you, O God, to bind us together through your Spirit. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, that we may become one body and one Spirit. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah.